Hey, Curtis, the King Assassin here, and uh, we're going to talk about a subject that's really, really, really close to my heart. It's uh, one of my favorite fish to go after, um, and, you know, if you're checking out this video, most likely you're a beginner steelheader. Steelhead is just not a fish, it's just not a sport, it's a culture. And to kind of introduce you into it so here in the central valley we got the sacramento river the feather river um you know the mccallamy the american all these big if the river supports a salmon run most likely or well it does support a steelhead run now the native steelhead species to the california central valley is the central valley strain steelhead now these tend to be, you know, in the four to six pound, maybe eight pound topping range when they're fully grown. A lot of people, you know, tend to overlook them for the ill strain, uh, the ill river strain steelhead that are almost double that size, can grow up to 45 pounds and are twice as long to boot. Um, and which is great, you know, we do get some ill river, we do get some ill river strain steelhead um, you know, pushing up into the American and stuff like that. Um, but this is going to be geared towards, well, both species, but mostly the McCallamy River and McCallamy River Central Valley Run Winter Run Steelhead. Okay, so, um, all right, so the great thing about the McCallamy River, uh, when it has to do with, um, steelhead is, is that the consistency of the run. It's one of my, it's my home river. It's the river I grew up fishing. It is my main staple of all of, that I know of steelhead. I learned on the McCallamy. Okay, so some things about the McCallamy. It's a very wild, majestic river, especially all the way from, say, you know, the San Joaquin River, the mouth of the McCallamy at the San Joaquin River, all the way on up to the Comanche Dam. All that is holding area for steelhead. Now, the smaller steelhead, the, the what we call half pounders, those start to show up, say, in September and October. They almost coincide ex or perfectly with the salmon run. So the salmon are heading up, boom, all those little half-pounders that have been maybe in the salt one, maybe a half year, they decide to start heading up. You know why? Because in every single one of those hen salmon coming up the river, they see nothing but a big old freaking meal, all right? So what they're up there to do is they're up there to, to basically take advantage of the huge salmon egg you know populations in the river so they can gobble up all them salmon eggs like the hungry hungry hippos is the best way i had it described to me um is is all those little salmon are just blah, 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 eating up hungry hungry hippos eating up those salmon or eating up those salmon eggs so then we start to get in late october early november you'll start to see more and more adults show up now an adult salmon starts at about 14 inches on up uh, for the Central Valley strain as an adult, uh, in seven, eight pounders is a trophy fish, but they fight like a freight train. They are ridiculously powerful and their zero to 60 time is unbelievable. So most of the time we're fishing them, we're fishing with really long rods. And why we like long, long rods with a nice sensitive tip, but some backbone is because that's basically a shock absorber. So when the fish surges that zero to 60 time, which is like a Ferrari, you need to, you know, your rod needs to absorb that power or you're going to break off. So line, we normally go with about, I fish anywhere from an eight pound test up to about 10. Sometimes I fish a 12. If it's dirty or water or higher water, you can get away with a little bit li bigger of a line diameter. Um, I like, you know, mono, uh, but everyone's got their favorites. There's no particular. Now we'll get into line specifications more when we talk about the different types of techniques that we're going to use to go after these guys all right so you know the place all right there are a few access points that some of you may know and this is what some of you guys may be even looking for all right i i've hinted to you a lot of you guys i'm going to send out a video about access points for the mccall me because i know a lot of my sack friends and stuff like that they they have never fished the mccall me they want to come check it out so this is pretty much what i call my realm of steelhead fishing for the McCallamy. And it starts, the lowest end would be near Wimpy's Marina, near Thornton, California. Okay, you got big tidal water there, you got deep holes, you know, a lot of people bass fishing with plugs or crankbaits. 
we'll hook one um, occasionally, but that's where they, they start at. All right, so there, they go on up. All right, then you got the Consumnes River Nature Preserve. All right, that's where the Consumnes and McCallamy meet. Right there where those meet, there's a big old washout hole. Some of you salmon guys may know it. Some of you guys, salmon guys in a kayak may jig that area. I fish it from the shore a lot. That's starting to get what I consider better steelhead water. All right, um, it's right there under Thornton Road. As Thornton Road, as you cross over the McCallamy River, just on the south side of the bridge, you'll notice there's a little turnout with a little pump house. You can go ahead and park there. It says no parking, but the signs, I happen to know the landowner who owns that, and, and they don't mind as long as you clean up after yourself. And this goes for everything. Clean up after yourself, be courteous, you know. Um, basically, be a good sportsman out there. So, that's a good area too. That's great. It's nice, deep. It's a sandy bottom. It's a clean bottom. Um, you know, so, uh, and a lot of effective techniques there is, you know, the spinner, um, you know, your plugs too. Um, all this is effective. Um, all right, so the next spot that going on up the river is the Peltier Road. Now, this is Peltier Road, McCallamy River Bridge. All right, on the east side of the bridge, you'll notice that there's a, a kind of a gravel little parking area, and then there's a gate across the fence. Well, once again, I know that landowner, and as long as you're courteous and kind and clean up after yourselves, they have no problem allowing you to go ahead and park there and just follow the road, the bridge on down, like walk like you're walking to the road. As soon as you see the bridge, you see where the river drops, you'll go up and over a little levee, and then boom, right there. And uh, that's a nice little... We got, you know, we got some little fast rapids going in and kind of like a little sandy bucket area. And then we got a, a nice long fast tail out. Okay, so that's a good area to do all, you know, your bottom bouncing, you know, your drift fishing. Um, if the water's high enough, float fishing. Um, and also spinners too. Uh, the largest steelhead that I had ever seen, not caught, but the largest steelhead I ever seen actually chased a spinner when I was salmon fishing a couple of years ago in that same, same exact spot. I mean, this sucker must have been a 10, 11 pound Central Valley steelhead. Followed my spinner up. As soon as he saw me, he said, Nyo! boom, turned around and he was gone. So it's a very productive area, you know. Um, you know, and all these areas, they change from year to year. So you're gonna just have to get out there and check out and see what, um, but for the most part, that's pretty much what is in that, that fast tail out at the end. That's a really good area for, you know, drifting, um, cause it's all sand. It's, I mean, it's, you can, zero snags in there. Um, all right, the next one going on up is the Woodbridge Dam. Everyone knows the Woodbridge Dam. You park, um, right near that tree, uh, over by the church and you walk on down. Um, you know, the Woodbridge Dam, the area you're allowed to fish, it's a really, really fast, uh, you know, really fast run into like, kind of like a bucket, but a really shallow bucket. And then that kind of goes along and slowly gets deeper and deeper and deeper until you get to the log jam. Once you hit the log jam, that's the deepest part of the hole. Um, so what I basically kind of do is I start at the, you know, I'll start up at the top. And when you're still at fishing, mobility is important. So have a backpack. Have all your gear in a backpack. Have it, you know, on you with you have your waders, you know. Have everything that you're going to take to the river you should be able to carry on yourself. Steelhead fishing is an extremely active sport. You're constantly moving. You're constant. You can't be picking up gear and going over, you know. You need to have everything that you're going to need to be on you. You know, fishing vests and everything come greatly and uh, popular you know with the, with carrying everything of yours you know waders also very important i suggest winter still had get insulated waders because the water's cold uh, so anyways back to all right so the calling river is is really fast you know um basically a fast run that goes into kind of like a gradual bucket and it slowly goes deeper and what i'll do is i'll if i'm float fishing i'll start up there by the bridge um, you know, I'll set my bobber stop maybe at like three feet and, you know, I'll throw my presentation, rather it be a bead or whatnot, I'll put, you know, underneath the float and I'll cast up and I'll just sit in it's perfect walking speed. The perfect steelhead water is nice, semi-deep water, but the perfect speed is walking speed. So if you're walking along the river comfortably, have a good pace, and you notice that you're keeping track with the water, that's perfect steelhead water. Okay, you don't want to fish that. So what we do, we call a poor man drift boat, right? Go ahead and cast that, that bobber on up, all right? And then just follow it down. Just walk along with it and watch. 
and as you get down soon as the steel so steelhead hold behind rocks they hold behind logs they hold behind so they're not in the current it's called a holding position then as the bait comes floating by they see it out of the corner of their eye and they'll dart out and devour the bait and then come back into their holding area and they'll just sit there and hold and wait for that all to happen again and that's how steelhead how steelhead you know eat their bait or eat their food in the wild so basically you know you're just kind of floating along and you don't know what's on the bottom you know there may be a rock i mean there may be one little rock and there's a steelhead sitting right behind it you know and you just float that bait on by and then whoop, so always be watching your bobber bobber downs reel until you feel and set that hook all right so reel till you start to feel the tension and then finish the hook set through and hold on because they're a blast all right so getting into so we got the woodbridge dam all right and then probably the largest area that you can fish for steelhead that's good water is behind lodi lake the river section all the way through the nature trail now all of it it's basically all that perfect walking speed water um it's really deep all right so when you're looking at a river where you see the dark green emerald kind of color of water that's where steelhead are. They actually use that green colored water to hide their position and it makes them feel comfortable and they're most active in that water. So you always want to seek that and there is a lot of it behind Loyal Lake. All right, so you know, same thing, go there, float fish through there. The water's kind of not fast enough. You don't really want to drift fish unless you're using like a single uh, split shot. But still, all right, so lots, lots of good spinner water back there. Um, you know, it's last of what I consider kind of the deep trophy water. And then all the spots from there on up is all going to be faster. Um, more of that drift fishing water, more, you know, um, float water that you have to start considering making sure that your presentation's getting down. All right. So a lot of times when you got fast water, it's boily, it's hitting rocks, it's pushing up every which way. And it, it creates a real boiled mess. Right. And your presentation isn't doing any good unless it's down where the fish are and the fish are in the bottom 10% of the water column so you got to get your presentation down there we'll talk about floats um, as we get into it but let me get off track here all right so Lord, all right so the next spot would be Elliott Road this is a spot I've never personally fished from the bank I have fished it from my kayak um, going down river but Elliott Road. Uh, there is access there. I don't know about parking. Um, I tried one time. It was a mess. So uh, good luck to you. I'd say park away and walk it on in. Um, but that's also, you know, it's a really fast run. It's perfect uh, bucket. You know, nice semi-deep section. Lots of boulders down there for holding water and just nice consistent speed. All right, going on up from that. All right, so Elliott Road is the division. Elliott Road to the Delta it's pretty much open year around for steelhead all right this next area is what i consider the upper section and from elliott road up to the comanche dam this area closes all right um, all right so the season's open from january 1st to march 31st all right and then it closes uh from april 1st to the fourth saturday in may that's the only closure time for this particular part of the river. So it will be opening up again in January 1st. That's where I always go to fish the steelhead opener. So if you head on out there, I'll see you out there. Um, this year, I'm going to get in my kayak. Me and a couple of buddies of mine, we're going to get our kayaks. We're going to launch from the fish hatchery. And we're going to float on down to uh, McAfee Park, and we're going to take out there. That's probably some of the premium stretch. But once again, getting off subject. All right, so Elliott Road. Um, all right, so the next one is Stillman McGee Park. This is my takeout um, from the upper section when I float it. It's a good area. It gets kind of crowded, um, but, you know, starting up there by the bridge, there's a nice, you know, fast little gravel, um, you know, a nice little run, and then it feeds into, like, a little semi-bucket, right? And the opposite side of, I guess it would be the, the north side, the north shoreline is really undercut and it's really deep right there. So if you're float fishing or whatever, if you cast up in there and you just drift it right off of the bank, that is dynamite water. 
right there. Perfect, perfect water. Also, a technique called plunking. If you want to learn more about plunking, go ahead and look up uh, Addicted Fishing. has a really good plunking video. It teaches you how to plunk. It's basically like f bait fishing with lures for steelhead. And what you do is you get in their travel lanes and you kind of just wait for them to come along. Quack! All right. So anyways, all right. So then uh, that's a good, good area, you know. Keep in mind, you have to pay to park in there. I think it's like $5, $6, maybe. Who knows with the way they raise things around here. But it, it does cost a, a fee to park there. Um, I uh, Our family's really good friends with the people that own the, all the land on the opposite side of the road from that. So I usually <laughs> go over there and fish with them there. Um, great area. That's a fast run. But that's all. So the problem with the McCallum is a lot of it's on private land. Okay? And if you're not connected to the community or you don't know the people it, it can get very very hard to get permission to fish this the, these areas unless you drift it in a kayak or a drift boat in which case the river is your playground but growing up i had a lot of friends i had a lot of access to all these great places so i may mention some a place a memory i had that i i won't mention where it's at only because it's on private land and uh, you know, chances of you getting to fish that area unless you're in a drift boat or a kayak are very slim. But regardless, okay, so going on up is what we call the Disneyland of McCallamy River Steelhead. And that is the McCallamy River Day Use Area. Okay, it's topped off by the dam, fish hatchery, fish ladder, bucket, run, bucket, run, bucket, run. I mean, it is the playground. We got islands. We got undercut edges. I mean, we got boil overs. We got anything you could ever want as far as steelhead water is right there in that park. Um, you know? And the whole park, I mean, this is their last little area of river before they get to the fish hatchery. You know? So, it, it's, it's good. It's good. All right, so enjoy it. Um, drift fishing's big here. Um, you know, another thing. All right, so what we're getting. So drift fishing, right? So drift fishing is what we're doing is we're getting slinkies, which are like, let me see if I can get one with, well, here's one. Oh, and here's a slinky. Jeez, I made a mess. All right, slinkies, right? They're these little paracord with buckshot in them, right? And they have no resistance. So when you're, you know, you put your presentation, match the size of your weight to the water speed and the depth. Hook this onto your line as a sliding sinker, you know, your uh, your leader coming off, followed by what we call a corky. All right, so these little corky, it helps your line float. And basically, it's like a lead, uh, or it goes on your leader, and it's basically like a little piece of cork that helps float your leader up off the bottom. Because if your leader was down in the bottom, uh, it's going to get snagged up constantly. So this helps. So here you got your weight and it's kind of tapping bottom. Tink, 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 tink. As it's going up the river, you're fishing it on a tight line. And once again, you can look up various videos on how to do these techniques. I'm just going to do a, a fast brush over. All right, ding, 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 you know, and this is helping float. And uh, you can put spawn sacks, you know, a couple uh, salmon eggs and a little spawn sack. You can float that for bait, um, which is all right. You know, here's a, and also here's another, what I call a pencil lead with the swivel punched into it this is what i'll use as my weight to get down to to drift fish um you know with your hook and you can drift fish beads you can drift fish uh, bait you know you got the artificial like the potski fire eggs these work really good uh, they're also neutrally buoyant so they don't sink nor do they float they're kind of just sub suspending um you know and 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 beads too you know Beads. As you can see, I'm a, I'm a very avid steelheader. This is a steelhead must-have, all right? So, Outdoor Warehouse has some. Uh, it's the P-Line Mega Steelhood Starter Kit. And, I mean, you got all sorts of colors up in here in beads. You got translucence. You have translucence means you can kind of see through it like a fresh egg. I mean, you got dark dead eggs here. You got pearls. You got pinkies. You got blue boys. I mean, you name it, you got them in this kit. So those are all hard beads. Now they also have soft beads. Um, I don't know where my soft beads are. Sorry, uh, <laughs> but so anyways, um, yeah. So basically, uh, you know, the fish hatchery is a great spot. It's a great steelhead there. It's great. You know, opening day can get a little busy, but it's never going to be as busy as the American. So believe that <coughs> excuse me i'm getting over cold it's horrible 
All right, so now that we went over uh, the areas, all right, now techniques. Now there's three basic techniques you're gonna use when steelhead fishing. And the first one is probably what I think the most versatile is float fishing. So this is a fish filled, um, I think quarter ounce float, which is about the largest size you would wanna use. Yeah, it's a 12 ounce float. This is about the largest you wanna use for Central Valley steelheads. All right, and then this is sliding. So you have the slider and then you have a bobber stop. You can either use Yoda, no. You can either use the classic, you know, where you slide on your line, pull it off and use that as a bobber stop. Um, I always put the bobber stop, then a bead. Then I slide my float on. Then I put a secondary bobber stop on the bottom and then a swivel with your weight and then your leader. Um, I do that secondary bobber stop so that if you get snagged and you pull off, your leader will break, but you'll still keep your float. If you don't put that secondary bobber stop on there, your float is just going to go free and you're going to lose these floats. And I don't know about you, but these things are kind of expensive for what they are. They're foam, but they're good. Okay, another way, if, if the, the sliding float, the great thing about the sliding float is you can fish really, really, you can fish a really long depth, right? And your float will slide down to your leader every time. So you can cast it and then it'll pull the bait down and so you basically can fish really really deep with the bobber where if you used a fixed float you can only you know cast as deep as your or as long as your rod is because any longer and you're going to be hooking up on stuff as you cast um so the uh the sliding float one of my favorites remember nothing bigger than 12 ounces all right my personal favorite and it all depends. If I'm fishing a bead or bait or whatever, I'll definitely use a side sliding float. Um, but the next one, when you do a lot of jig fishing, which, all right, so let me get into another technique. All right, so no, 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 back on track. Float fishing. All right, and this is another type of float. This is what we call a fixed float, right? And this, your line, there's a little surgical tubing, right? And they slide on there, and your line basically slides through the surgical taping and slides on down right this is the fixed float you can still adjust the depth but you it's not as versatile as say the, the sliding float yoda no <sighs> dang dog dude i swear he barks at butterflies but anyways okay so fixed float all right so float fishing you can float beads under there you can float bait you can float jigs you can float i mean well that's about it but that's a lot because i mean you know there's a lot um Float fishing is great, you know, um, you know, so jigs is probably the most productive way to catch steelhead in the Central Valley is jigs. So here we got right here is a uh, Yakima bait moxie jig right here. This is in, so what you want to do is you want to match your float size. I like to fix float when fishing jigs, right? So you want it to match the amount, the weight of your jig with your float because that will allow a good riding float. It'll allow your float to to float perfectly the way it was designed um, another thing within the float fishing is, is here's a way to tell right so say the river's flowing this way right and you, you get this right your bobber is kind of pointing up river a little bit right well what that means is that your presentation what you have underneath the bobber is too light and it's getting blown down the river faster than your bobbers floating okay another way is you know perfectly up and down this is how you want it Another way is if it's pointing down this way. Usually means you have too much line out or you're dragging bottom, and that dragging bottom with the resistance is causing your float to, to point down river. Alrighty. Um, so different types of jigs. Jigging with a float fish is my favorite. We got this, which is the Moxie, uh, Yakima Mo or Moxie jig once again, and this is the pink on pink with the UV finished head. I mean, they get crazy on here, right? I think they call this a powder puff. And uh, this is a little little marabou shine in there, right? With the white head, um, you know, with the pink and then the kind of light white body. Um, you know, another really good one. This is a uh, Spro jig. This is a Spro, uh, I think, uh, Execution Elite or something it is. This is a, kind of a smaller jig, but this one's really good too. You got the purple and the pink with the pink head. Um, one of the best in low and clear water is what we get mostly in the McCallamy River. Low and clear, you gotta go with the Nightmare. The Nightmare color pattern on low and clear is deadly. Probably the most producing jig ever in the history of steelhead fishing is this guy right here. 
minus the, a normal nightmare normally has a white head. I stray away from the white head. I do the nightmare in the black and the red instead of the black and the red and the white head. So just a little variation. Jigs are deadly. If you're going to go to the river with one thing, go with a jig and a bobber, jig and a float. Alrighty, so we covered float fishing. All right, drift fishing. We kind of covered it with the weights, right? The ding, 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 tink in the bottom. Um, some tools that you might use while drift fishing. Sometimes on the hook, if you have a bait that doesn't necessarily float very well, uh, they have these, these are called little puff balls, right? You just slide these on your hook all the way up the shank, up by, and then you place the bait on there. And what this is, is this once again neutrally buoyant. Doesn't sink, doesn't float, stays right even. So as it's going down the river, it's holding that bait perfectly in front of those fish on a nice consistent drift um also things with all right so spinning glows great for drift fishing too so you have your weight and that spinning glows are just like your corkies they help float your leader besides these as the the current's spinning it and as you're drifting it down it has kind of this little kind of like swimming kind of spinning pattern right that's why they call it spinning glows. It sends out vibrations into the water. It gets the steelhead's attention, and for some reason they want to cream it. So we got, you know, I, I do a lot of chartreuse. Chartreuse everything for salmon or for steelhead. Salmon, um, you know, salmon they like the reds, you know, but it's always pink or chartreuse for steelhead. All right, we got the silver and the chartreuse wings on that one. Um, you know, all right, so. Another, all right, so drift fishing, um, you know, beads, another really good thing for drift fishing. Once again, pink, pink is deadly. The pink Berkeley floating trout worm. This thing is deadly. You feed it on just a regular hook. You just flee in here. I'll show you a little quick. All right, these bags are not easy to open. Oh my goodness. All right, well. Here, I got this orange one already open. I'm gonna use you with an orange worm here. I'm gonna get a hook. All right. So, right here, you notice you got the hook, you got your worm. You just feed it on a regular hook. Some people go like this. And. Boom, 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 right? And that's all you need right there. And you just leave it kind of like that, right there. It just has it floating down. It's deadly, deadly. All right, so the pink worm. Also, under float fishing or drift fishing, um, they sell these, uh, see, Mad River has some. They're the Mad River steelhead worms, all right? And that, basically, you're fishing on your leader like this, and it just come on down the river. It looks good. They have all different colors. The pink on pink's one of my favorites. The pink on chartreuse, which is called a disco worm. It's probably my second favorite. Um, many, many different colors. They even have the nightmare color, or the nightmare color pattern in uh, worm. Okay, so hardware, plugs. All right, so the third and final technique for getting these steelhead is what we call casting for them, right? And, and you can cast an array of things. And also inside of this casting will also be plunking, even though it's not really casting, but it's fishing with plugs. And if you're in a kayak, you know how to uh, pull plugs, right? So some popular plugs for steelhead, uh, the maglips. The, mag the smaller maglips like this are deadly, especially with that rattle. These are a deadly, deadly, deadly steelhead plug. Um, some other populars, you know, you got the quick fish. A really popular plug for for uh, steelhead. You got the uh, wiggle warts in the smaller sizes, also really really great. Um, you got the hot shots, also amazingly great. Uh, these are all good plugs, you know. Even hell, little crappie plugs. As long as they have that wiggle and that side to side motion, it they'll get them. Trust me. As far as the plug. All right, spoons. Uh, I love my spoon fishing when it comes to uh, steelheading, right? The steelhead will slam a spoon unlike anything else. Uh, just any, basically any different type of spoons all work. Um, Castmaster designs here. 
Um, I even got the different color pattern. All right, so you're gonna wanna use gold on overcast days and you're gonna wanna use chrome or silver on sunny days. Um, don't know why, it's great. Um, also, so you're saying like, ah, steelhead uh, tackle, other than ordering it online, sometimes can be hard to find in our area, right? But here are some substitutes. You don't need to go order online and everything. So I showed you the jigs, right? Well, these work just as well for, well, maybe not just as well, but they work great, right, for jigs. Or these little atomic jigs from uh, Berkeley. You know, those do really good. You know, in, in lieu of, you know, your jigs. Um, these trout magnets, too. Imitate a little grump. Throw that underneath. They fix float. Deadly combination. All right. Um, all right. So the last bit of uh, casting hardware that I want to bring up to you guys is the spinner. The spinner probably is the most effective casting lure you can have for, for steelhead. They, for some reason, they just crush it. All right, so anything from the old rooster tail works great. Um, you know, I like these little MEP, uh, little MEP stingers. These things are great in the chartreuse color, amazing, right? Um, also the chartreuse with the orange color right there, that's another MEP spinner, perfectly weighted, right? Now, later on in the winter, when you get the larger steelhead showing up, right? You can go even into your smaller uh, salmon spinners here. You know, like this one, we got a big old, uh, I don't know, it's an atomic spinner from Bass Pro Shop. Um, but also, you know, these tactical spinners right here are really good. These are also my salmon spinners, but these also work great. These look a lot like a very popular uh, spinner called uh, Steelhead Slammers, which are great spinners for steelhead. Um, and the smaller sizes, because remember, the Central Valley strains a smaller steelhead, but not a lesser than steelhead trust me they are just as mighty and can hang with just with the, all the other different strains of steelhead so you know these tactical spinners really great really a lot of flash um it irritates them you know there's this this rumor that that like salmon uh steelhead don't eat when they enter in the river well unlike salmon steelhead can live after spawning and typically do live after they spawn so they'll go to the river they'll spawn they'll go back out to sea they'll stay out to sea for a couple years they'll come back they'll spawn this um you know so they have to maintain a, a certain level of health while in the river and sometimes they may enter the river to spawn and they may not spawn and exit that river for six seven eight months sometimes they're called resident steelhead steelhead that have been in the river more than six months I mean, I've seen giant winter steelhead caught in, you know, April, May, June, you know, on the McCallum River. So it's just, it's, it's, they're kind of their own, they do their own thing. They're unique. They're not like salmon. They don't die after spawning. Um, you know, another thing is, is that, so they, they consume food, you know, like you'll seldom catch a steelhead. There's this old myth that you'll, always catch a steelhead and it'll never have anything in his stomach so that proves the theory to them that steelhead don't eat when they enter the river well no that steelhead wouldn't have eaten your presentation if it had something in his stomach if it was full that's what i think you're getting um with them sure cold water species the colder the water the better that's why winter steelhead are the biggest the strongest and the fastest and the most bad ass um in, in my opinion which i you know, uh, summer steelhead, although we don't get them on the McCallamy, summer steelhead can be really fun to catch too, especially in the Pacific Northwest because warmer water, they fight, they're a, lot, they're a lot more active. In the colder months, you know, sometimes they're less active, but we don't ever really have what I call frozen steelhead around here. I, we never have steelhead that are lethargic because the water's too cold because it's California, come on. Um. So yeah, so basically that's kind of my my beginner's guide to the McCallamy River Steelhead. Um, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to ask below. Um, if you want to see some other kind of content, maybe you want me to go more into a particular uh, style of fishing, one of these. Um, but just let me know. But uh, as always, it was great seeing you guys and uh, tight lines, my friends. And I will see you out there January 1st, hopefully.